this is going to be one to stir the pot. There's these seven warnings to the church in the last days. Those who overcome will keep the commandments of God and they will have right to the tree of life as you read this book of Revelation. But this is, uh, the irony of this is just, to me, when you know prophecy, which you guys got to understand something, who's going to, Who's going to despise prophecy except for the apostate church, right? Who's going to not want to repent? Who's going to kick and fight and, and lash out and say ki- all kinds of evil things because you tell the truth about what the Bible says? The apostate church. So here's a big problem here. The men are allowing the women... To do everything the Bible says that women shouldn't do. And you know why? Because they got the spirit of whoredom, according to Hosea. It's a most of this Bible is not pleasant pleasantries. It's not pleasant words against this generation. This generation is the most wicked generation of God's wrath. So suck it up and repent. This is what Messiah is gonna do. This is your It's not your Christmas Jesus. No, no, no. He's a lion. He came as a lamb to give you opportunity to repent. But this is what he says. This is what he's going to do. And then all the churches are going to know. Listen closely. Ah. And to the angel of the church of Thyatira write these things, says the Son of God, who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. So these guys are already fulfilling the royal law, but what are they doing wrong? Notwithstanding, they're not, they're not brave enough to do this. This is, this is exactly what, they're not even brave enough to read this. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against you because you suffer that woman Jezebel which calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. This is end days. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, but she repented not. So here's the, here's the spoiler alert. She's not going to repent. It's just like when Judas betrayed Messiah, he had to do it. Otherwise prophecy is wrong, right? Well, mystery Babylon is not going to repent. She will not repent. So go poke the bear. Start telling women that everything in the Bible is true and they're going to hell along with their husbands that tolerate her and their children are going to get dashed to pieces just like all prophecy says. And then maybe one or two of these women will dummy up Swallow that pride of theirs, put some clothes on, quit wearing makeup, and being haughty with a stretched forth neck. Because the punishment is unbearable if you knew what the Old Testament is talking about. So here's Yeshua warning these churches, seven warnings. Now those seven churches are written to where the northern kingdom of Israel was dispersed to because they did Christmas and Easter in the beginning. It wasn't called Christmas and Easter, I know. I'm not stupid. I've read the book. But you, apostate church, are stupider than a sack of hammers. Because my book tells me so. And all you guys do is look for all the pleasant things that are written in there, and guess who they're written to? The very elect. They're not written to the apostate church. But the apostate church cherry-picks those scriptures and puffs themselves up. You'll see women out there all the time. Oh, the rapture's coming and we're saved by grace and all this stuff. And they redefine the word grace. That's all they've done because they're brainwashed and they think they sit a queen, just like it says in Babylon. There's one nation above all nations that has done this to the whole entire world. Who's that? She sits a queen. It's the Jezebel spirit. Her fornication is talking about adultery. What idolatry does Mystery Babylon do that spread to the four corners of the earth? Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. 
They're singing to, to the damn Christmas tree, saying that they're not worshiping Christmas tree. And they won't get it out of their house. Why wouldn't you listen to your Messiah? Come out of her, my people. I know your works and charity, service and faith. These are to people that are already learning to rebuke, but they still tolerate that woman, Jezebel. I know your works, charity, which is agape, which means to follow the Ten Commandments, and service, faith, and patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because you tolerate that woman, Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, but she repented not. You see, to eat things sacrificed to idols is used as fornication in this sense. So is drunkenness. So is whoredom. These are the, these are the terms, the idioms that the New Testament is just referring back to the Old Testament, what the prophets said that these wicked people are going to do. Now, you happen to belong to that generation. And yes, it's quite a pain in the butt, seeing many are called, few are chosen, the broad gate is huge, and the narrow gate is wee little entrance in. Why? Because the Jezebels just can't help themselves to remain as Jezebels. They don't understand what God wants out of women. And men are cowards to let women trample over them. And that's what this society's turned into. Because they, they, once you introduce pagan idolatry into the church, the end result is pride. And your Jezebel is your result. So when you look at your wives and the way they act, and then compare it to scripture, you know the end has come. But he gave her space to repent. So there's actually guys out there telling these women because they care about them. They don't want, you don't, it's so terrible what's going to happen to those women. Okay. However God's going to do it, there's going to be an invasion to people who sit a queen. They think that they're, they're way up there. Very prideful people. No harm can come to them. Then, this invasion is going to take place of whatever. These people are going to hate these prideful people, these other people. It says they're the worst of the heathen. Okay? They have no mercy inside their hearts. They're brutal. They're violent. They're going to kill your husbands, according to Scripture. They're going to kill your children in front of your face. And they're going to rape the snot out of you. Multiple times until your pride is completely gone. See, the sin reflects the punishment. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffer that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophet, is to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, but she didn't repent. So he knows this is going to happen. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. What happens in a bed? A bed, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. So I might as well tell you this is in here. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches, all of the churches, every single one of the churches, shall know that I am he, which searches the reins of the hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works, your wicked deeds. The punishment reflects the sin. But unto you, I say, and to the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not known this doctrine and have which, and which have not known the depths of Satan, the depths of Satan, who know the depths of Satan, who deceives the whole world, Okay, Mystery Babylon is, is a nation. The whore, the slut, and her many, many harlots, that's the church. Are riding Satan. But those of you who don't know the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon 
you no other burden, but that which you already hold fast till I come. So when he comes, that's when the punishment is going to take place. And he that overcomes and keepeth my works until the end. Keepeth my works. You see all these people, oh, that's works-based salvation. What are you doing listening to them? Why are you a part of that? Do you see? Do you not see? Your works are important because you're doing the workmanship of Messiah. He told you that. See, these wicked people blaspheme the spirit of grace. Every day, they're delusional. And God says, I'm going to give them up to a strong delusion. Like, he hates Mystery Babylon. But Mystery Babylon sits a queen. She thinks she sits a queen. She thinks she's the bride of Christ. This Bible told you, the whole entire church is going to be apostate in the last days. And it's those who are wise that are going to tell other people to repent. This is, this is look at this. This is the end. Well, look at Daniel 12. That's also the end. What's going to happen? There's these guys that are going to rise up and they're going to turn many people back to righteousness. That has to take place and that's the only way this is going down. There's no other way this is going down except for what the Bible says. So dummy up. Quit wanting your ears tickled because that's exactly what you're going to do. Your Bible told you that. You think that you're going to be able to mess around with God when his word is right in front of your face? That's how stupid you are. So repent. Repent. Because it's the truth that sets you free. And the only way you're going to get the truth is to obey God. That enables his spirit to work in you. Then you'll become bold. Then you'll tell the truth because you have the truth. Because loving your neighbor as yourself is to feed the poor. The poor that don't have the word of God. Why would they be poor, especially in this generation? Because all those wicked pastors are lying to all God's people. Do you not have the balls enough to go and tell your neighbors? Well, then you're convinced as a transgressor yourself because you won't tell other people. And I will kill her children. See, I don't like that. Not that I don't, I'm not blaming God. This world can't continue on the way it is like this. But they call evil good and good evil. In the church, these people are wicked. They don't belong in God's church at all. They infiltrated it. Just like Yeshua told you. That there's going to be wolves and hirelings. And the devil sold in the tares. Well, what are they going to want? To, what are they going to be like? They're going to want smooth ear tickling words. They're not going to listen to the truth. We were all told the rules of rebuke. You take my lawnmower? Yeah, I'll pull you aside. I won't put you on blast. But... If you start lying to the children just because you're a Jezebel and you want to put your lipstick on and you want power and you want, 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 well, what do you think the fornication of Christmas and Easter does? It creates covetousness, which God hates, and so do we. He wanted you to trust him that he would make your provisions if you sought the kingdom and his righteousness first. But you're too impatient to wait. Let God do it. No, you want to fit into this disgusting toilet bowl society that Mystery Babylon created. That's nothing like God's ways at all. But you call evil good and good evil. So I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and the hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your wicked works. That's what he's saying. And those who do good works unto their good works. That's why he gives you comforting words here. It says, but those of you who do not understand the depths of Satan, I put no other burden on you. He knows who they are as well. I can see them as well. But I do know the depths of Satan. So I do have a bigger burden. I don't tolerate that woman, Jezebel. Because I, I'm going to trust the father and his son over the apostate church. What? Just because you want to fit in? You want to be part of the country club? That country club goes to hell. 
Not only when it's talking about tolerating that woman Jezebel. This doesn't mean, this is, this is the case. This is the truth. This is the drunkards of Ephraim. Okay? So not only is it Mystery Babylon, but it's also the drunkards of Ephraim. It's referred to in different, different ways throughout Scripture. It's all the same place. It's where it all begins. It's those who destroyed the gospel. Why do you think two witnesses come onto the scene and teach the gospel? Why? Because the wicked church didn't do it. That's why there's forty to 50,000 different denominations. That's the whores. That's those harlots, the many daughters of Mystery Babylon's great whore. That's all your denominations. So dummy up. Of course you need sharp words because that's the rules of rebuke. When they go to fables, sharply rebuke them so they learn to fear. But there's very few men and women out there willing to do that. So don't think that those smooth ear tickling guys out there are the ones that love you. It's the ones that obey the word of God that love you. Because you have your own imagination of what love really is. You know, why don't you go to Galatians 5 and start harping at me because I'm not very gentle. Except for the word in Greek is useful. That's how easily deceived stupid people are. They're not willing to look in the book. They're not willing to watch out for the lying pen of the scribes. <coughs> Did you not listen? The lying pen of the scribes is all through the Bible. Because there's wicked men running it. What are they doing? Making merchandise of you. They're lazy bastards that work for half an hour on Sunday, get some sermon from a Cracker Jack box that some other guy already preached, you know, 10 years ago that tickled everybody's ears and then that guy ended up getting a mega church. So everybody's trying to get that mega church going so they can make the money penny. And then my brothers and sisters are going out trying to put the Ten Commandments on these people's churches and they're calling the cops. You don't take your brother to law. They disobey everything in this book. <clears throat> they disobey everything in this book and you can't see it. <coughs> Yet the book tells you what they're going to do. But why are you not listening to your father in heaven? His will's going to be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is your daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. We screwed up. We got, we got deceived by those wicked people. But do you want to remain there? Do you want to go with them where they're going? Where the worm doesn't die and the fire's not quenched? I'll say it again. If the blessed are those who teach people to keep the commandments while they follow them themselves, they're going to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Then you tell me why not one single church is out there telling you to keep the Ten Commandments. They're the opposite. So you guys are letting people who break the commandments and tell you it's okay to do so, that you're saved by favor, you're going to let them. They define that word themselves. Look it up in Strong's Concordance. G5485. Divine influence on your heart. That's what it is. It's Sharis. That's the original word. And it means divine influence on your heart which is conviction, to obey. They screw everything up. They're deceiving you. Don't be deceived. For many will come in my name, which is authority. So many will come in my authority, claiming that I'm the Messiah, and they'll deceive many. That's the sign of the end. And that's where you're at. He said the truth will set you free, not their lies. And if you don't, Listen to what he says. You're going to be destroyed from among your, among your people. You will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And these guys, because they want to enter into the kingdom, they want to be, oh, because we're so great and we're so nice and we're so friendly and we put our nice lipstick on and we look so pretty. They think because of that, they're going to the kingdom of heaven. But I'll tell you something. When they see videos that I make, they are fuming mad. You know what, even what the sons of thunder means? The sons of commotion. Yeshua appointed John and James to be the sons of commotion. Stirring up the pot. Because 
Yeshua did the same thing. He flipped tables over, said, you're of your father, the devil, a brood of vipers, fools for not knowing what the prophets said. That's the way the Messiah spoke. But they plug their ears to that. They want to hear the baby Christmas Jesus that Hollywood created. And these dummies can't even count to three. Like, you really think they got the spirit of truth when they can't even count to three? The time has come, this is what Yeshua says, where people must worship God in spirit and in truth. So, Friday night, evening, to Sunday morning, is not three days and three nights in the grave. The angel rebukes Mary for even being there on the fourth day and says, why are you here? He told you three days. Because he rose on Sabbath, he's Lord of the Sabbath. The dummies can't even correct themselves. You can show them that, and they just, even something simple like that, because they're so arrogant that they can't even correct themselves. When the Bible already told you, he's going to be cut off in the middle of the week. What's the middle of the week? Wednesday at sunset. Daniel 9, 27. And that's when he confirms covenant with, with, with um, many. Until the consummation of the marriage. So the heavens have to take him up for 2,000 years. He's about to return. Like, you can do math, right? Say they say it's 33 AD or 28 in between there. It don't matter much, does it? The point is, 2,000 years is almost up no matter what. And there's 3.5 years of tribulation because of this wickedness in the church. I already know. Listen to me. I grew up in the church and I asked plenty of questions and I got lied to my whole life. But then I went and read the Bible by the grace of God, which is conviction. Finally, what a dummy I was. Wait till I'm 38 years old to actually read the book. But I got so fed up with the lies because I was just like anyone else going to the pastor because he, you know, allegedly went to school. He should know better. But I didn't know that they were all written of in this book. Every one of your wicked pastors is written of in this book. When it says there's going to be many antichrists, it's talking about them. They make up their own interpretation and version of what the Messiah is, and they ignore everything that the prophets already said about him. The prophet said he's going to teach the teach that the Moses said he's going to come and teach the Ten Commandments. Well, then why are why are the people not keeping the commandments? Why are none of your pastors telling you how important this is? None of your past listen to me, I'll tell you why. Why the devil has done this. The devil's deceived the whole world. Because you get the spirit of truth. God's spirit of truth will enter into you if you obey. But then you're going to act like me. Then you're going to act like Jeremiah. Then you're going to act like Andrew. You're going to act like Megan. Matthew. And all the rest of them. Chris. All those guys giving their lives up to try to save your lives from the wickedness that this Bible says our churches are going to do in the last days. And you guys say, what? Oh, it can't be. Well, few be that find it. But if you love your neighbor, you're going to give them the opportunity to get in that gate too. Does that not make any sense to you? Why do you think they killed the Messiah? Why do you think the disciples got killed? Because they acted like Joel Olstein? Joel Olstein is just an example of when you... When you act like the Ma and Pa, Sun God Day, Christmas Jesus Church, that's just a blemish for them to show you about them. And all they do is bicker back and forth saying, oh no, see, that's the apostate church. No, that's the apostate church. They're all apostate. That's the many harlots. They're not teaching you obedience. The only way you get the Holy Spirit of truth is through obedience. Otherwise, he gives you up to the Antichrist spirit of error. And Antichrist means a different Messiah, a replacement of the real Messiah. And John says there's already many anti... We know it's the end because there's already many antichrists. That's many churches, many denominations. The whole world's deceived except for the very elect. Because the church dropped the ball, went about to establish their own self-righteousness, like dropping an F-bomb, is, is, it's their language. I think the, even the F-word means a wall, originally. Something like that. How did it turn into a swear word? Because... Somebody along the line didn't like the way the word sounded. So then the other people got irritated at that guy's self-righteousness, so they just kept saying it into his face just to tick him off. 
That's how things happen with self-righteous people. That's why the Bible even confronts that. They'll make a man an offender for a word. Or a drink. It's just ridiculous. You were told, they're going to turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Well, what's grace? How can you turn unmerited favor into lasciviousness? Are you stupid? It's not unmerited favor. That's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So now, take your earplugs out for half a second. The whole world's deceived. The whole world's saying it's unmerited favor. The whole world isn't going to be forgiven because blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is the sin that won't be forgiven. Quit saying it's the burden of the Lord. The burden of the Lord. The burden of the Lord. For every man's word will be his burden. Yeshua is quoting that. He says, by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. And every single person that does not hear Yeshua will be destroyed from amongst the people. Now, during your tribulation period, which is coming, that's when he's going to humble a lot of people. They're going to get a real big spanking because they wouldn't listen now. I'm just letting you know so when it happens, you know. And that time, man, it would have been so much easier if you repented now. But there's a lot of people that are chosen not to. And there's some people that are chosen never to because they won't get rid of the idolatry. There's different harvests. You know, there's a lot of wicked servants that are no longer with us. They had the opportunity to do this and be brave and go warn the people because they know already that there's appointed people that are going to hear this now. Then, when it all happens, the big old Bible spanking's coming, the wrath of God. But unfortunately, for the United States of America, according to Scripture, and if you don't believe it's the United States of America, well, then some, some country that spread bullshit to the four corners of the earth and God's going to hold responsible, they get destroyed as an example to the rest of the world. And then the rest of the world's going to repent, and they're never going to be like those people that thought they sat a queen. I'll show you who the bride of Christ is, according to Scripture. Well, I'm right here in Revelation. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him, a hundred and forty and four thousand. Having his father's name written on their forehead. Not this Jesus. Well, how's the whole world deceived? Do you really think, you really you want to underestimate the power of the devil? Of course he changed his name. The Bible tells you, even Messiah himself said, because you don't keep the Ten Commandments, one will come in his own name and him you will receive. I come in the Father's name and you receive me not. These guys are going to have the Father's name on their forehead. And there's 140 and 4,000. But these are Israel. Didn't, this isn't the church. But he warns the church. And all those things in the church, the seven churches, which are in the northern kingdom, that's Israel. That's where they got dispersed. If you don't know anything about the Bible and history and what's really going down right now, the ten tribes that the pastors wouldn't go try to find, nor would Judah either, they had 2,000 years to go look for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and they failed. According to prophecy, that's the way it had to go anyway. But according to prophecy, they don't rise up until the last days. And many of them rise up, but only few choose to do the work. You see? So few are chosen. And they return after they're caught up to the throne, and they judge everybody with the Messiah. And they stand with him on Mount Zion. And they go and destroy like a quarter or a third of the earth. This is that great army that God's going to raise up. That the whole, you tell me why you've never heard this in church. How come you never heard about it even in your synagogues? Because this place called where Ephraim and Judah dwell together, they're going to start doing the feast because they're still tolerating that woman Jezebel. 
I, I promise you this is going on. So these guys start to repent from Christmas and Easter, according to prophecy in Hosea. But their wives, their noses are out of joint because they still wanted that celebration. So all they do, what do they do? They start doing God's feasts in a profane land on profane days against prophecy and against the law. It's in the law. It's in Deuteronomy, the second instruction. And it's the second instruction is written about the return of the northern kingdom of Israel as well. It's, what, it's, it's a foreshadow of the future. It's like the New Testament of the Torah. Listen to Deuteronomy. It's my favorite book. There's a lot of meat in that book. I love the law. You know, if you're like David, you meditated on, meditate upon it day and night. So here's the problem with Ephraim. He, see, he doesn't, the great things of God's law are counted unto him as a strange thing. And that's why if you see the people in the Torah movement, they'll deny the key of David. Well, don't deny the prophecies of that book. Your name gets blotted out of the, out of the, out of the book of life for taking away the prophecies of that book. They do it with no shame. Why? Because of the pride of Ephraim. There's only one nation right now predominantly following the Torah over every single nation in the world. By the hundreds of thousands, people are coming to the Torah in the United States of America. But what are they doing? Coveting. Tolerating that woman Jezebel still. They, st they, ha they have the latter works. They know but they still suffer that woman Jezebel. That means she's still dictating what she wants over what God wants. And the men are too cowardice to stand up against that and be godly men. You know, I hear, I hear what's going on out there. So, I know what's going on in these people's homes. Like, look at them all doing the feasts on different days. They're, you know, they're just making a mockery of it all because they weren't listening to the full instruction of God. What they were supposed to do, quickly write a check for half. They're supposed to go out and tell the people to repent. They, these are wiser than the children of light. Why would they be made stewards and they have a flock underneath them? It's right there, Luke 16. They're about to get their... their um, Stewardship taken away from them and then quickly write a check because it's going to be right at the last minute these guys are going to repent. So they better. They better start paying attention to what prophecy says about doing the feast. It's a time to be a watchman, not a, a feasting on a, on a lamb. To us, it's like cutting a dog's neck, you dumb dogs that cannot bark. Didn't you read Isaiah 66? But when we talk to these guys, they are so arrogant. They're just like the pastors and the Christian churches. So, you want to suffer that woman Jezebel? But this is who the bride is. We'll get back to that, right? Isaiah 62 is very clear who the bride is. And you should listen very closely to this. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O new Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. You that make mention of Jehovah, Keep not silence and give him no rest until he established, until he makes New Jerusalem a praise in all the earth. So these guys aren't going to shut up until New Jerusalem's here. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give your corn to be meat to your enemies. And the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine, for which you have labored for. That's the watchman laboring through this book to warn the people and it, he's by his right hand, he's going to take that away and then there's going to be a famine for the word of God. <laughs> you know, all you evil servants that know me, get ready. I warned you a long time ago. 
But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord. And they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of my people. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out of the stones, lift up the standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye the daughter of Zion, behold, thy salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out a city, not forsaken. You see? Get Pastor Bob to teach you that one. Oh, how about Rabbi Bob? You see, because Rabbi Bob really hates the idea <laughs> that the northern kingdom of Israel exists still inside of the Gentiles. And God is going to do this marvelous work and he's going to pop them out of there. Why? Because they were willing to be servants. They have their ear nailed to the gate. They hold the key of David. They know... <clears throat> they know that the day begins at dawn. Ephraim, he's unwise. He's a silly dove. He's just feeding on the wind of Judah with all Judah's traditions. Judah's in a lot of trouble. I will do a work in your day, and though you be told, you still will not believe, O you who are surrounded by the heathen. In Mystery Babylon, he's talking to Judah. That's why Paul warned the Pharisees in Acts 13 when he was quoting Habakkuk. You know? Like you read your book, right? You know all these things? You don't need watchmen to warn you of this stuff. Because you already all know it. Like quit humping the leg of United States of America's many harlots. Okay? Come out of her, my people, was not a joke. It wasn't my words that said it. It was his words. He warned you. But guess what? Guess who's going to listen? His people. Because the daughter of Zion dwells with the daughter of Babylon. So he's not going to send watchmen to a nation that doesn't have his, his children in it. But the children will hear the Messiah. The porter's in the gate. That's the watchman in the gate. The sheep come and go because they hold the key of David. You would not have condemned these men for breaking the Sabbath had you known what David and what the priests did and how they profaned the Sabbath but were held guiltless. You see, Ephraim looked at the great things of God's law as a strange thing. And now he will not accept them because they went and started doing his sacrifices, his offerings, and they ate it. They went and ate it in a profane land and they blessed themselves. But now he remembers their iniquity because they were also doing Christmas and Easter. They didn't go and warn the church to repent. They were just like Judah. Judah didn't go and look for the lost sheep of the house of Israel either. So that's why this is written. All ye beasts of the field come to devour all ye beasts of the forest. That's quoting Ezekiel 34. The watchman warns the shepherds about this in Ezekiel 34. His watchmen are blind. They're all ignorant. This is talking to Ephraim. This is talking to the United States of America Torah movement. His watchmen are all blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs that cannot bark, sleeping, laying down, loving to slumber. They're not willing to go find the people. They just argue and bicker amongst themselves on which day the Sabbath is, or which time the Sabbath is, or, or um, what day the feasts are on, or what calendar to go off of. Some of them even think the Sabbath bounces around from Tuesday to Friday to whatever. Depending on what year they are in the Jew, they don't even know that calendar is not going to be restored until God restores his kingdom. I mean, he's, he, even the Christians know that. Well, some of them do anyways. I did. The restoration of the kingdom. That's when he gives them a pure language. He took it away. And here's these knuckleheads trying to establish Paleo-Hebrew and then making a stumbling block for everybody. That's why Ezekiel 2 and 3 was written. Because God even 
puts that stumbling block in front of them to show who they are because prophecy has to be fulfilled. Now, because this book is already written against you and you don't like people telling you what to do, isn't it ironic? You're already written of in this book, every last one of you. All I have to do is talk to you for five minutes and I know where you are in the Bible. <coughs> that's, that's the advantage of reading this book. That's why so many people get mad at me because of the discernment. But I just know where you're written of in Scripture. Listen, he's going to raise up servants and they're not dumb dogs that can't bark. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. They are shepherds that cannot understand. So they're shepherds, but they can't understand. They all look to their own way. That's the, the, in Deuteronomy 12, they do that which is right in their own eyes. Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3, they do that which is right in their own eyes. So guess what happens to them? Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3, the Holy Spirit withdraws from them. They're, these are the shepherds. What did Luke 16 say? Their stewardship's about to be taken away. How are you going to do it without the Holy Spirit? You can't. You can't. You can't talk like this without the Holy Spirit. You can't go up against 330 million people by yourself if you don't have the Holy Spirit. You can't talk. You can't understand this book without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of truth comes to those who obey and brings remembrance to everything he said. The Word became flesh. Enter into the work of the prophets, reap what they sow together, you will rejoice. Why didn't you guys do that? They are all greedy dogs which can never have enough. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his gain from his quarter. For his gain. That's their motive. He knows the hearts. He knows your heart. Come ye, say they, we will fetch wine and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. See? Not a care. Not a care. But that's a result of tolerating the woman Jezebel. See, everything revolves, everything just interlocks together. It all fits. That's why you read scripture line upon line. But they that don't do that fall backwards, get caught, taken in a snare. So I suggest you start listening to those who actually know what this book says. This too will happen to you. This is so amazing. Those brothers and sisters in here that actually listen. Isn't it amazing? The Beatitudes. Just amazing. Like God is so good to his servants to show us the things, the mysteries and the amazing things. It's the honor or the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings and queens to search that matter out. Because he will show you. That's why... That's why David was just rejoicing. I know your law better than the rabbis. And I do. And so do the boys and girls in the cult that you guys like to mock. Well, you dummies don't know what this book says. Who's the cult? What 40 or 50,000 denominations of Christianity or synagogues are you involved in? Like who created... We're talking like cults on steroids. 40,000 denominations. Each one of them is a cult. Each one of them is one of those harlots. Because they don't fulfill the royal law at all. And they should know the times that they live in. They don't even know that. Because why? Because today will be just like tomorrow and much more abundant in Mystery Babylon. Other places it says the daughter's are at ease. They take it as a light thing. But those who are afflicted and tossed with tempest and not comforted, oh, those who mourn for Zion will be comforted, but they're not comforted, but they will be as soon as they figure this out when God in his due season, in, in time, reveals to his servants the great and amazing things of this book, the Beatitudes. Like when I received the key of David a few years ago, like, I almost blew my lid. It was amazing. But, my goodness, the Beatitudes, at, you have to accomplish it first to understand it. Thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, 
I will lay thy stones with fair colors and lay thy foundations with sapphires, and I will make thy windows of agates and thy gates of carbuncles and all thy borders of pleasant stones, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. See, in Ezekiel 14 tells you, once they go into tribulation, and they will, you will no longer be able to save your children anymore. So this is a promise to servants. So if any of you wicked men that were with me before and no longer are, just remember that. My children are saved. That's why I did this. This is why I did the, the will of God. Although I didn't really know that this was in here when I started working. But I'll tell you what. I looked at, this, I looked at the American people who I knew I was going to wake up the same as my own children. That's how much I love them because God put it in my heart. You other people is not why I'm doing this because I already know prophecy. A lot of you are going to go into tribulation because you didn't listen because the Bible already told you this. And then you're going to know there was a prophet in your midst because you enter into the work of the prophets and you become Jacob the servant. That's your clue. Then the Messiah comes. But until watchmen rise up and they all shout together, the Messiah can't come because it's got to be fulfilled first. In righteousness shall thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near you. You see, that's the faith. I'm not afraid of nothing. Because the God already promised. That's Abraham. He took his kid right to the altar, raised the knife. If you were the seed of Abraham, you would do what Abraham did. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whoever shall gather together against you shall fall for your sake. And you know what these wicked guys do when I read this and they hear, catch wind of that? See, look, he wants us to fall and he wants us to get punished. Like They're wicked. They're so wicked. God wants you to fall. God wants to punish you because of how wicked your heart is and you wouldn't go and even rebuke your wife from doing Christmas. You don't love your children. Behold, I have created, God has created the smith that bloweth the coals in fire, that bringeth forth the instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. You see, the guys that that think that I wish punishment on them. It's not about wishing punishment, but the reason they're like that is because they tolerate that woman Jezebel. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness, not self-righteousness, their righteousness is of me, says Yehovah. So why would you expect smooth ear tickling preachers like you see in every single church to be these servants? Nobody's going to raise a weapon against them. They're just tickling your ears. How do you like them apples? Back to the Beatitudes. This is amazing. I'm just... I know that my brothers and sisters, some of them are in here. So let's go through this. Actually, you know, I'm going to do a couple things. Let's do Isaiah 13, Hosea 13, and Isaiah 66 again. Why not? You know, it's sun god day. Let's bring that whore down. Thus says to the Lord, or thus says the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For those things has my hand created, and, and all those things have been, says the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit that trembles at my word. That's the Beatitudes, poor in spirit, that trembles at his word. Then he goes on about the controversy here. He that kills an ox as if he slew a man, as if he murdered somebody by just sacrificing an ox. He that sacrifices a lamb as if he cut a dog's neck. 
That's what it's going to do to us. This is going to bother us. This is quoting Isaiah 1, the beginning and the end. And God hates your feasts and your Sabbaths even. He's talking right to Judah and calling them Sodom and Gomorrah. Where's that? It's not in Israel, what you would call Israel. This is talking about where Judah and Ephraim dwell together. Where's that? Well, Ephraim's just humping the leg of Judah. They jumped right out of the Christian frying pan right into the fire of Judah. I'll do a work in your day, Judah. And though it be told you, you will not believe. Habakkuk chapter 1. But Ephraim, you're going down. Ephraim's going to fall and Judah with him. Where? Mystery Babylon. He that, offers, uh, he that offers an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burns incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. What did I just say? Doing that which is right in their own eyes. Do, that's a quote about doing the feasts wherever they feel like. In a profane day. Making no difference between the holy and profane. See, chapter 66 is talking about the Christian church. Or 65 is talking about the other people, the ones that eat swine's flesh and the broth of all abominations are in their vessel and they say, stand by thyself, we are holier than thou. That's talking about the Christian church. This here is talking about Ephraim and Judah. Like this is, this is the story, how it ends. It's going on right now. They have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abomination. They've chosen their own way. I will also choose their delusion and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, how did he call? Through the watchmen. None did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. He already told you how it was going to go down. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that what I delighted not. You see, the, my personality pisses everyone off on purpose. It's supposed to be that way. It's egg on their face, on their self-righteous face. God doesn't want self-righteous people. He wants people that tremble at his word and worship him in spirit and in truth. All that Nancy nonsense that they created, they don't even behave like that anyways. It's a, they're hypocrites. It's a joke. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you. You see, they got to hate you. And this has already gone on thousands of times. And cast you out for my name's sake. What is he going to do? Save Israel for his name's sake. They cast you out for his name's sake. Said, let the Lord be glorified. But he shall appear to your joy. And they shall be ashamed. Big blunder, guys. All you evil servants. Big blunder. A voice of noise from a city. A voice from the temple. A voice of the, of the Lord. That rendereth recompense unto his enemies. Now it goes right into this, this beautiful part. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who has heard such a thing and who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. What's her children? The sons and the daughters. The very elect. This, these are the kings and the queens that dwell amongst you. Shall I bring to birth and not to cause to bring forth, says the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, says thy God? Rejoice ye with new Jerusalem and be glad with her. All you that love her, rejoice for joy with her. All ye that mourn for her. Who's he going to comfort? Those who mourn. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Of course, it's in the last chapter of Isaiah because this is when it's about to happen. And then you're going to know there was a prophet in your midst. That ye may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations, and that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck, and ye shall be born 
upon her sides and dandled upon her knees as one whom his mother comforts so will I comfort you. <laughs> All right, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And you shall be comforted in New Jerusalem. And when you see this, and we see it now, he just revealed it to us not long ago. And when you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish like a herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants and his indignation towards his enemies. So hopefully all of you are, have n never gone up against anybody standing to rebuke the sin out of Jezebel. For behold the Lord, because anybody who doesn't help us is against us. See, the, the many called and few chosen you should have joined hands with us and got to work. Because it's the knowledge of God that proves who the people are. That's the fruits of the Spirit. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots, because they return, those who think upon the Lord or think upon his name and fear the Lord and talk often one to another. Hey, kitty. Meow. <laughs> Those who do that, a book of remembrance is written for them. And they return. That's when he makes up his jewels. And they return and they judge between the righteous and the wicked and those who serve God and who serve him not. So he comes with his chariots like a whirlwind. These are the four winds. The four archangels are holding them back until the 144,000 are sealed. Then... Boom. This is when the, the man child's born in Revelation 12. So there was, <coughs> <coughs> there was a sign that already took place a long time ago. And now you're going to, next sign is going to be when you see the red dragon cast down. So that's why everybody's watching and waiting. That means being a watchman. So everybody else, look it, there's nobody out there being a watchman hardly at all. Because there's only a few of them. Very, very, very few. Can't wait to meet them all. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by, by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord will be many. It's the 144,000 that execute this judgment. That's why they're standing on Mount Zion with the Lord. That's the army. Joel 2. Read it. Read all of Joel. Read your whole Bible. You don't got much time left, though. Go to AKA Watchmen Wake Up on YouTube. Keep your comments to yourself and pay attention and read your Bible. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst of... In the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, says the Lord. That's your fire consumption against those filling their vessels full of swine's flesh, saying that they're holier than thou. I mean, my, my brother's sitting right here. He's met many of them knocking on the church doors, giving them the Ten Commandments. Getting the police called on him. Well, what's going to happen to those guys? Jeremiah is going to judge them all. That's what's going to happen. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them. And I will send those that escape of them into the nations to Tarshish, Pool, and Lud, and that draw the bow to Tubal and to Javan and to the isles afar off that have not heard of my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Okay, this is what Yeshua is talking about when he says, great is the fall of that house, and then others are going to fill your seats from Mystery Babylon. See, Mystery Babylon has this book with all freedom to read it, but they rather their constitution. Yeah. They rather their constitution than this, this law here. 
of keeping Ten Commandments. So what do they do? Massive amount of Christians, right? Just huge amount of Christians in the United States, and they all have their own churches. This is my kind of church. This is my kind. This is my kind. This is my slut over here. This is my slut over here. That's what it is. None of them are teaching the truth. But what they did do is they pushed all their nonsense to the four corners of the earth. Almost like a competition. Who could get as many lie, lying churches in Africa and, and Asia and wherever they were going. Well, they're in trouble for that. So all the Gentiles that never heard the fame of God, why didn't they hear the fame of God? This is Isaiah 66. This is the end, okay? This is when he returns. They never heard the fame of God. Well, how is that possible? The, the United States put the gospel to the four corners of the earth, didn't they? No, they didn't. They put Mystery Babylon's whorish lies and everything it says in Revelation 17 and 18 in Jeremiah 50, 51, in Isaiah 40, 47, 48, that's what they did. Because prophecy has to be fulfilled. So God's going to make a sacrifice out of the United States of America to show the rest of the world, never be like them. So, come out of her, my people. He gives you one warning. Come out of her, my people. But this wicked, arrogant nation that did this thing, because they're all the same. They're all the same. They love that name on their forehead because of pride. They're so proud that they're going to make Mystery Babylon great again. Well, you see what the Lord's going to do. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain, New Jerusalem, says the Lord as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come and worship before me, says the Lord. See, this wicked church doesn't even think his Sabbath is important. Now listen to the last verse because Yeshua quotes this three times in a row. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men. Remember Lazarus and the rich man. The, that, that bit of scripture that Yeshua spoke of. And that's another place. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. And they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So everybody's going to look down and they're going to be called least in the kingdom. Why? Because they broke the commandments and taught others to do so. Just like Matthew 5.19 says. But those who teach, do, and teach the commandments will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Again, who's doing that? Not one wicked church out there is doing that. Not one church is telling you people to keep the commandments, which gives you the Holy Spirit, and that's what Messiah told you, that I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit if you obey, as I obeyed the Father, you obey the Father, and you will receive the second comforter, even the Spirit of truth, that will bring remembrance to everything that I said. He says... That those who do not understand my parables are not converted. That's why he speaks in, in parables. Because he's weeding you out. If you would have listened to him, you would have received his spirit. But the Christian church denies the power of the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Have nothing to do with them. That's what Paul said to you. Paul told you. That's a weird number. Yeah. Praise God. Paul told you, have nothing to do with these people that deny the power of the Holy Spirit. The power is the truth. The power is the grace. The grace is conviction. Even by definition of charis, the original word in the Greek. Charis, divine influence on your heart. Take it in context. How does, how does unmerited favor teach you? <coughs> Which is that? That's in Colossians, right? I think it's in Colossians. I might be wrong, but maybe it's in, in uh, Titus. With the children of disobedience? There's, there's 
The, the spirit of grace teaches you all things. It teaches you to repent. It, it helps you know the difference between what evil is. You get an unction from the Holy Spirit be, to, to, to decipher what's, what is really uh, wrong and what is not wrong. And you get it from this book. I don't know, understand how anybody can think that they understand God if they don't read the book. Like, I've read this book so much. And I didn't do it just for myself either. I knew that I had to go warn the people. How come you didn't, how come you didn't do videos for six years warning people? How come you didn't do it? So if you didn't do it, shut your mouth. Because you're supposed to go and love your neighbor as yourself and tell them what this book says. How come I can understand this? I wish you'd get right into my head and you'd see it too. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the ones that tremble at his word, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Well, that's going back to Psalm, what was it again? 30... Four? Really, I think it's 34. 37 has much to do with it and 51. Okay? If I, if God required sacrifices, I would have given it to him. But when I learn what transgression is, I'm going to go tell the people. That's the, the person that has a humble, contrite spirit that trembles at his word. That's what the Psalms tell you. So when you actually fulfill it in Isaiah 66, when you're going up against the guys doing the feasts... He that kills an ox as if he slew a man. He that sacrifices a lamb as if he cuts us a dog ne dog's neck. This is talking about Ephraim. Ephraim is going to be doing the feasts. So blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It will be to your joy, and they will be ashamed. Because you're warning them not to do the feasts. Then we go to the next one. Blessed are they that mourn. Mourn for what? Mourn for Zion. Mourn for New Jerusalem. For they shall be comforted. We just read that. They're going to be comforted. As one whom his mother comforts, so will I comfort you. And you shall be comforted in New Jerusalem. And when you see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish like a herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants. Servants! And his indignation towards his enemies. The enemies, are what are they doing? Also, I will choose their delusion. No. Yeah. Hear the word of the Lord. You that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you are not, are not the servants. They're the ones many were called, but only few are chosen. Because they hate you. Why? Because they're doing the feasts and you're not. Quickly write a check for half. Quickly write a check for half. Luke 16. They're wiser than the children of light. If you do the feasts right now, stop. Repent now. Even if you've already done it, say, Lord, I am not going to do these feasts anymore. I'm going to go now, quickly write a check. Then you've got to go tell these people, quickly write a check for half. I was wrong. That's what you have to say. You have to know it, though. You need to know it. Not because it came out of my mouth. It's in your book over and over again. It's in your book. Read Hosea. Because Ephraim, the United States of America, has made many altars to sin... Altars are going to be unto him to continue sinning. I wrote to him the great things in my law in Deuteronomy 12 and 16, but they were counted as a strange thing. They sacrifice the sacrifices of my offerings and they eat it. Now the Lord will remember their iniquity and send them into Egypt. That's tribulation. So quickly write a check for half and you go tell those people that you convinced to do the feasts as a steward, telling them what to do, Tell them to repent. Those are the ones that are wiser than the children of light. They're the ones that have no guile on their mouth. And they follow the lamb wherever he goes. And they have the key of David. They're not defiled with women. That's the 144,000. Blessed are the meek. That's the meekness of wisdom. Brother Wyatt discovered something in 2 Corinthians that I got to check out. See, that's why we exhort each other with scripture. Then when somebody listens, then they get 
given a big chunk of meat themselves. That's why we work together. That's why they speak often one to another. Come to our Sabbath gatherings. Why is there 168 people here and in the Sabbath gathering there's only 60? Huh? You know how much we know? Do you know how close you are to the end? Straight is the gate. Go find one of the guys to give you... Where's your cards? We ran out. There's one on my fridge, isn't there? Yes, there is. I'm good. Screenshot this. You come to the Sabbath gatherings and you talk about the Word of God because the world is coming to an end. And we're going to even go through that. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm just reading the, the Beatitudes here. This is crazy what's in here. It's about America. I'm, a, I'm Canadian. So I'm just telling you, it's about you. This part coming up. It's the same thing being said in Isaiah 66. I dropped your phone again. I know. I'm trying I, to, I'm they not, just have to look at that thing right there. Yeah. I got you on here live on Facebook. Sorry about you. I'll keep following. Okay. Take a screenshot of that. And maybe it'll work and you can come there. Or this. All right. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. What's mercy? Go and learn what this means. I prefer mercy, not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. That's Yeshua telling you. I'll read it. Like, if you don't believe me, he's quoting Hosea, chapter 6. But they, like men, have transgressed the covenant. Why would he? And he came to bring sinners to repentance. Why do people hate us when we tell the truth? When we have the spirit of truth already, that's why we can talk like this. Because we obey. And we're not afraid. Wouldn't you rather be brave than a coward? God's looking at all of you. Blessed are the merciful because they show people mercy. What's that? That means to start following the covenant. That's showing mercy. That's, listen, all you guys, when you see someone sin and you don't let them know it's a sin, you're not showing them mercy at all. You're just letting them go to hell. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. The ones that show mercy, they shall obtain mercy. So if you don't do it, you won't obtain mercy. God works in idioms. You know why? That's how he preserves his word. That's why we read line upon line, here a little, there a little, precept upon precept. And those that don't do that, fall backwards, get caught, taken in a snare. Well, I don't want that to happen to anybody. So you got to go tell them the truth. And somehow you got to shout it so it gets through their thick skull because they're so brainwashed by this mushy, gushy John Lennon church. All 50,000 different denominations doesn't matter. Do as thou wilt. That's Satanism. To each his own. Satanism. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. As an idiom is those who have clean hands, which means what? Wash, washing your hands is all about being a watchman. If I don't warn you, your blood is on my hands and I won't have that. So I'd rather you hate me, which just blesses me, for telling you to repent. If you reject it, I at least have clean hands. That's the pure heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Oh, this guy's not very peaceful. You're about to get destroyed. Peace is the covenant of peace, is the Ten Commandments. It just keeps repeating itself. It's all talking about the same thing, but get this. Watch this. The peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Not for your self-righteous BS. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Well, that's why I'm so grateful at this stage of the game of all those evil servants that talk smack about me. I'm on Reddit. I'm all over the place getting, getting just ridiculed all the time. It doesn't even bother me. Why would it bother me when I know this book? It's all in vain. You do it for nothing. It's like punching steel. Why would you hurt your hand like that? Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. What is his name's sake? Rejoice and be exceeding glad. Well, what does this say? You shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish. Same thing. 
<coughs> Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Because you're reading the prophets which were before you. It's just explaining what the prophets said. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith it should be salted, <coughs> it is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Now, there's a somewhat of a, I don't, don't really know her a little bit. I talked with her, but she, she showed me something and it was a good analogy that when you, the only way you can lose your saltiness is when you dilute it. Well, when you go to Isaiah 28 to the drunkards of Ephraim, they're diluting it with their wine, their drunken pride. Woe to the crown of pride to the drunkards of Ephraim. The, Every time you see Ephraim, say the United States of America in your head, because that's who it's talking about. Ephraim is going to be the most powerful nation in the last days with a multicultural, like a, a melting pot. A multitude of nations within a nation and the most powerful nation in the last days. Woe to the crown of pride to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty, so they were beautiful, is a, let's make Merca great again. Glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. It's not talking about alcohol. Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, which is a tempest of hail. This is the, this is his punishment coming. This is the devil being cast down. The hail is the third of the angels. Remember the parable of the fig tree. Learn it. But to you, brethren, you know perfectly well that the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night, right? Wrath isn't appointed to you. Do you see how this all connects? It's just amazing. It's freaking cool. It is. And a destroying storm as a flood, he goes after the woman with a flood, a flood of mighty waters overflowing shall cast down to the earth with the hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim shall be trodden underfoot. It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. You know that that's right in Malachi chapter, Malachi 3.16. They talk often one to another, book of remembrance, and then they go and there'll be ashes under their feet. <coughs> of those who come back and they judge between the righteous and the wicked. It's all, in, that's Malachi 3.16 and all of chapter 4. I mean, I could read it. What I really want to do is remember what we read in Isaiah 66 about the travailing woman, but New Jerusalem is a little different what Ephraim goes through. So, now, if you're a woman, you listen up very closely because this is the love of God that I show you this. But it's not so pretty if you don't listen to me. It's not me. It's the word of God. This is what's going to happen. To all of you Jezebel type women, if you're lucky, you just get killed. But if you're not lucky, your punishment reflects your sin. Chapter 13, Hosea. So, at this point in time, I'm going to read one verse from chapter 9. The watchman of Ephraim was with my God, but the prophet is a snare of a fowler in all his ways and hatred in the house of his God. So who's the watchman of Ephraim? Well, I might as well just tell you who it is. You're looking at him. That's why I can tell you all this stuff. I'm not from the United States of America. I'm from the North, warning you. That's in another place in Isaiah. But we're in Hosea right now. I'm telling you this right now because the next thing you know is tribulation. You go to Micah chapter 7, the day of thy watchman, especially when you compare it to Ezekiel 24, the watchman's wife dies. The watchman wife's, watchman's wife dies. And now it's the time for your perplexity. It's coming. They have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Gibeah. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity and he will visit their sins. Even I'll read you this other part about the guys doing the feasts. It's right here too. Because the United States of America has made many altars to sin, altars shall be unto him to sin, to continue sinning. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. They sacrificed the flesh 
for the sacrifices of Passover, and they eat it. But the Lord accept, accepts them not. Now will he remember their iniquity and visit their sins, and they shall return to Egypt. For Israel has forgotten his maker and built his temples, and Judah has multiplied fenced cities. But I will send a fire on his cities, and it shall devour the palaces thereof. This is where Judah and Ephraim dwell together. You can get the gist of it by reading the whole book yourself. But we're going to go to 13. I'm going to read the whole chapter. When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended in Baal, he died. And now they sin more and more and have made to them molten images of their silver and their idols according to their own understanding. All of it the work of the craftsmen. They say of them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Therefore, they shall be as a morning cloud and as an early dew that fades away. Like this is Hosea's version of what Isaiah just said in Isaiah 28. And as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind, what's the world? That's 144,000 out of the floor and as the smoke out of a chimney. Yet I am the Lord God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior besides me. This is talking about Jehovah. So they, these guys have all the Christmas Jesuses. Okay, remember, they made many altars to sin. Then they repent and then they start doing the feasts. But now he remembers their iniquity and sends them into Egypt. And thou shalt know no other God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pasture, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Right? Therefore I will be unto them as a lion, as a leopard by the way. I will observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps. Yeah? And I will rend the call of their heart. And there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beasts shall tear them. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thy help. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities? And thy judges of whom thou said, give me a king and princes. I gave thee a king in my anger and took him away with my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is hid. The sorrows of a travailing women, woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the land, in the place of the breaking forth of children. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from my eyes. Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come, and the wind of the Lord shall come upon him from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry, and his fountain shall be dried up. He shall spoil the treasures of, a, of all pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against, against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed to pieces, and their women shall be ripped up. Now, in Isaiah 13, it means they're going to get brutally raped, ravished. And if you want me to read that, it's the same thing. I might as well. And this, the travailing woman. Okay, they're going to be ashamed who do the feasts. They're going to be ashamed who eat swine's flesh and say, stand by thyself. I didn't read that chapter, but you can go read it yourself. The servants are begging God not to destroy them all. That's Isaiah 65. This is already going on. All these sun god, sun god day churches... Do you guys know that the Sabbath was always kept and that Constantine in 321 AD, that's when he changed it to the vulnerable day of the sun? It was a deliberate act to worship the sun. And the Christians will not take the correction? That's because the truth is not in them. These wicked people do not care about anybody but themselves. And they want salvation, they bless themselves, and they're trampling the spirit of grace. Grace is conviction. 
It ain't unmerited favor. And because they hated the truth, God gives them up to a strong delusion that they all be damned, that believe not the truth, that they might be saved. But see, the problem with the whole situation is, is that God's people are in there and he's going to save them anyway. The watchmen go out to try to find them. But what, what do the watchmen basically do? They're warning the people that are going to get punished. And then they're going to know the prophet was in their midst. So on their conscience, or on their conscience, the whole time they're getting destroyed, they're going to be like cursing because they didn't listen, because they expected it to look something different. The burden of Babylon. Now, we're talking Ephraim and Hosea. Now in Isaiah, it's talking about Babylon. Both the same place. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice, exalt the voice unto them, unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice at my highness. That's the 144,000. Okay? Sanctified in the word. Your word is truth. I don't pray for the world. I pray for those who I've revealed your, your name, Father, Jehovah. And he comes in his Father's name, and by no other name will you be saved by. That's why the watchman will not stop making mention of the, of the Lord until he makes New Jerusalem a praise in all the earth. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations, gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the hosts of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. How will ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. Like, come on, you guys, this is the destruction. So he's talking to the people that live in those days of the end. Therefore, shall all the hands be... And your, your wicked pastors tell you that the Old Testament's fulfilled, yet... Even Peter told you from Malachi, or from Samuel to Malachi, every single prophet warned you about your destruction. So why aren't you paying attention to what the prophets say? I suggest you quit your job now, the money you got in the bank, whatever, and start reading this book. And beg God to open up your eyes and ask him for the truth. You just haven't asked for it yet. Yeshua said that. Ask for the truth. You just haven't asked for it yet. Repent. It's so easy. You know what's hard? Your pride. That's the only thing that makes repentance hard. Once you get over the cognitive dissonance, which is the Antichrist spirit of error, that your father, the devil, that's who you're listening to, a liar and a murderer. Once you get over that, you fall on your knees. You repent. You keep the holy covenants of promise. You do not do the feasts. You're not worthy to do them. Not until you're in the land of your inheritance where his name is. That's when you can do the feasts. When he restores the kingdom. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. That's the travailing woman. They shall be in pain as a woman in travail. They shall be amazed one to, at another. And their faces shall be as flames. Behold the day of the Lord comes. Cruel. Both with wrath and fierce anger. To lay the land desolate. We're talking about Babylon and Ephraim. Remember that. That's where you live. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. You're saved by favor, really, eh? For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall be removed out of her place, and in, wrath, and the, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger, and I shall be as the chaste row and the sheep and as a sheep that no man taketh up, they shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one into his own land. Why do they got to go to their own land? 
It's a melting pot. Where is that? It's a multitude of nations within a nation. This is Ephraim. This is Babylon. Everyone that, that is found shall be thrust through. Okay, killed. And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. This is all because of Jezebel. Now, men, I'm not telling you to be some kind of dictator to your wife. You're supposed to rule them in the Lord. In the Lord, not in your own, go get me a beer out of the fridge. That's not the way you're supposed to be with women. But you're supposed to show them this word and they're supposed to be obedient to what you tell them God says to you. That's how it works. But your women are ruling over you and your children are your oppressors. And that's, I could go into Isaiah 3 about that. And it just describes how they're walking around all haughty, showing off their sexuality. They got their tits hanging out wearing their Lululemons, doing whatever they can to get this negative attention. And that their beauty is going to come up as stench. So the sin reflects their punishment. They are going to get, in other places, these, these, they're going to, you guys are going to get invaded by somebody. They're going to be, you won't even understand their language. And they're going to gangbang your wives until they're dead. While they kill your children. This is, this Go to, uh, is it 2nd Esdras what? Go to, read 2nd Esdras. It's a book that used to be in your Bible. They took it out so that you didn't know. It's saying the same thing. Just worse. Definitely more descriptive. Their, their children shall also be dashed to pieces before their very eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver. So you're not going to even be able to pay these people off. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows shall also, their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Well, it doesn't really matter, right, America? Because your abortion the pile of babies you've already killed, <coughs> it's going to be a reflection of what you're going to see. And the reason, this is the thing. Guess who's responsible for all those abortions? Not just the person that did it. You. Why? Because you introduced Christmas and Easter into America and spread it to the four corners of the earth, which is all pagan. So you empowered demons rather than casting them out by the finger of God which wrote the Ten Commandments. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms. So who's the glory of kingdoms right now? Who is the glory of kingdoms right now? Babylon. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. What did Yeshua say? It'll be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than that generation. So, am I still mean for telling you the truth? Am I become your enemy because I'm warning you? Galatians 4.16 <sighs> It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it, it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall... The Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherd make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures. And owl, This is all talking about demons. Doleful creatures and owls shall dwell there, and sat, I don't know what that says, shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses, and the dragons in their pleasant places, and their... And her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. So, in other places, it's, it's, it's going to be the den of devils. And the smoke is going to rise up forever. That's Mystery Babylon. Some people try to say that Jerusalem is Mystery Babylon. But the kingdom of heaven is going to ascend or descend on the heaps of Jerusalem. 
So, yeah. That's just some. There's more. I mean, it's a big book. But these details are like in all different, all the prophets wrote about this. And it's a warning. So, God is so kind to you that he's raised up people to let you know what's going to happen before it happens. Just like Amos says, I think it's in Amos 3. Your Messiah already told you to enter into the work of the prophets and reap what they sow. All, all the time Paul was talking, the reason why the Christian, tor- the Christian church twists Paul's words like Peter said he would, they were going to do. Paul, Peter already knew they were going to do this. 2 Peter chapter 3, 15, 16, and 17. All the apostles were saying the same thing. But they don't understand Paul because Paul's always quoting the Old Testament and the law. And they don't bother to go see what he's, what he's quoting, so they have no clue. Same thing with Yeshua. He spoke in parables because he was always talking about end days prophecy against the end days generation. But they don't want to hear about their destruction, so they shut their ears, and it's just going to come upon them as in the days of Noah. So shall it be. That's the way the cookie crumbles. It's because of your heart. That's the way you're going to be judged. That's why those who fulfill the royal law, there's no law against them because they fulfill the royal law. And that's what I'm doing in front of your face right now. I'm telling you the truth so that you have a chance to live. Although many will hate me for doing it, I do it anyways. That's how you get persecuted. Yeshua didn't get executed on a cross because he was telling smooth ear tickling words. No, he was calling them a bunch of idiots. Oh, you fools. I'll read it to you. Here's another place, by the way. This is when he was about to be crucified. Daughters of New Jerusalem is the way you would interpret this. Weep not for me, but weep for yourselves. Because you're going to get brutally raped. And for your children, who are going to get dashed to pieces. For behold, the days are coming in which they... They shall say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, which means when they keep the Ten Commandments, what shall be done in the dry? The dry tree does not keep the Ten Commandments. Now there's the dry tree, the green tree, and then the one that produces fruit. The one that's producing fruit is talking to you right now. You go and rebuke. You know what the Bible says. You care enough about the people that you give your life up as a a punching bag so that others that are appointed to hear will hear in the midst of you who don't want to hear. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Next page. This is not just my opinion or, or Yeshua's words and, and the truth. It's also my opinion. I share this opinion. 100% I share this opinion with Yeshua. No problem whatsoever. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. I 100% agree If you don't believe what the prophets have spoken, I look at you as a fool. And I have no problem telling you that. (laughs) Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So, Why don't you guys all come to my house and I'll sit here and I'll prophesy everything written in this book about you. About me. I know where Jeremiah is written in the book. I know where I'm written in the book. I know where Andrew's written in the book. I know where everybody's written in this book. Because you guys, the churches are doing it every single day, what's written in this book, and they won't listen, which is also written in the book that they won't listen. So what God is doing is he's raising up certain people (coughs) and those certain people are not liked very much and they get persecuted and they get run out of churches and all types of things. They get slandered on Twitter or on YouTube. 
They make women get very angry because women want to be treated in a certain special way like Mystery Babylon has conditioned them to be. The men allow it. And guess what? All these things I just read to you are coming to that group of people. And that group of people pushed their ways on the whole world. And by the way, just so you know, from outside looking in, like we may we see things maybe a little differently outside of the walls of Babylon. Like we hear what everybody in the world thinks of you. They don't like you at all. And the Bible tells you that. They hate the whore. It says, the kings of the earth hate that whore. That's Revelation chapter 17 and 18. So, that whore, that Jezebel, that Ahab, go look at what Jezebel, I'll tell you right now, when she got thrown out, she got thrown out of the window, was it a tower? It was pretty high up. Was it, I think it was a tower. That's ironic, because the watchmen are in the tower. There was eunuchs that threw her out the window. Eunuchs have the key of David. And the dogs ate her. After she was trampled on by horses. After she put her makeup on. And trampled on by horses. That's interesting, yeah? Yeah, it is. There's your Jezebel for you. And what, what was she? She was uh, the queen that loved Baal. <coughs> well, guess who's calling the Messiah by the name of Baal? Yeshua is, is the name of, of the Son of God. He comes in his Father's name and he says, I don't pray for the world, but only those who I've revealed your name unto and for his name's sake and for his name's sake. And it'll come to pass that all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. But if you call on that other name, you ain't going to be saved because your heart wasn't open enough to get correction. He doesn't want people who are not willing to repent into the kingdom. You've lied to all the people in the world. He's looking for those who won't lie. It says it in the scriptures as well. That he's looking for children that will tell the truth. That's who he's looking for. His lost sheep. The ones that are oppressed. The ones that are poor. That are robbed and spoiled. By the wickedness of this apostate church. Come on you guys. You find me one place where we're even supposed to celebrate his birthday. Right. Nowhere. We, he told you right with his own mouth in John 4 that he's, God is looking, the Father is looking for those who will worship in spirit and in truth. In Amos 5, it's talking all about Babylon too. If you understand what Stephen says in Acts, Acts 7. But when you go to Amos 5, he hates your feasts. He hates your songs. He won't listen to them. And he hates those who are saying, we can't wait for the day of the Lord where we get raptured. It's right there in verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the, the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? Isn't the day of the Lord a day of darkness and not light? See, these people in the church don't know anything about the Bible because all they want is smooth ear tickling words that make them feel comfortable about their wickedness. And they're not willing to lift a finger for anyone. They give a couple bucks, pat themselves on the back, and they just paid the whore to get richer. She sits a queen. These people think they sit a queen. Who's the bride? The sons and daughters. That's who the bride is. New Jerusalem is people. The kings and the queens. That's who the bride is. This wicked generation is is like no other generation in times past. Information increases in the last days, and then the end comes. Anybody notice in the last few four to f three to four generations where he recompenses the sins under the third and fourth generation of those who hate him, that erect a graven image, the Christmas tree? All comes from Egypt and Babylon and all that stuff. And you, you're too stupid to consider what the Bible says against you, well, what are you going to do when you're in hell? Click your heels to get together and wish that you could go back and change your, change your ways? It's too late then. Remember, Lazarus and the rich man. That's what the reflection is. 
where the worm doesn't die and the fire is not quenched. Those will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. They're trodden underfoot because the grace is gone. The conviction's gone. They have no conviction. It's diluted because they're drunk, not with wine, but with pride. All right, that's enough. You guys can chew on that for a while.